Hi, thank you for joining me today. We're reading through A Course in Miracles, the main text, and today we're going to read chapter 19. Well, I can tell you, we're going to read a portion of chapter 19, because chapter 19 looks to be a very long chapter. It has uh, 12 sections to it, and so I don't anticipate that we'll finish this uh, today in any way, shape, or form. Maybe not even half of it. We'll see. Um, so, we'll start. Chapter 19 is the attainment of peace. Section one, healing and faith. We said before that when a situation has been dedicated wholly to truth, peace is inevitable. Its attainment is the criterion by which the wholeness of the dedication can be safely assumed. Yet we also said that peace without faith will never be attained. For what is dedicated to truth as its only goal is brought to truth by faith. This faith encompasses everyone involved, for only thus the situation is perceived as meaningful and as whole. And everyone must be involved in it, or else your faith is limited and your dedication incomplete. Every situation properly perceived becomes an opportunity to heal the Son of God. And because he is healed, because you offered faith to him, giving him to the Holy Spirit and releasing him from every demand your ego would make of him. Thus do you see him free, and in this vision does the Holy Spirit share. And since he shares it, he has given it, and so he heals through you. It is this joining him in a united purpose that makes this purpose real, because you make it whole. And this is healing. The body is healed because you came without it and joined the mind in which all healing rests. The body cannot heal because it cannot make itself sick. It needs no healing. Its health or sickness depends entirely on how the mind perceives it and the purpose that the mind would use it for. It is obvious that a segment of the mind can see itself as separated from the universal purpose. When this occurs, the body becomes its weapon used against this purpose to demonstrate the fact that separation has occurred. The body thus becomes the instrument of illusion acting accordingly seeing what is not there, healing what truth never said, and behaving insanely, being imprisoned by insanity. Do not overlook our earlier statement that faithlessness leads straight to illusions. For faithlessness is the perception of a brother as a body, and the body cannot be used for purposes of union. If then you see your brother as a body, you have established a condition in which uniting with him becomes impossible. Your faithlessness to him has separated you from him and kept you both apart from being healed. Your faithlessness thus has thus opposed the Holy Spirit's purpose and brought illusions created on the body, or rather centered on the body, to stand between you. And the body will seem to be sick, for you have made it, you have made of it an enemy of healing and the opposite of truth. It cannot be difficult to realize that faith must be the opposite of faithlessness. Yet the difference in how they operate is less apparent, though it follows directly from the fundamental difference in what they are. Faithlessness would always limit and attack, 
Faith would remove all limitations and make whole. Faithlessness would interpose illusions between the son of the God and his father. Faith would remove all obstacles that seem to rise between them. Faithlessness is wholly dedicated to illusions. Faith, wholly to truth. Partial dedication is impossible. Truth is the absence of illusion. Illusion, the absence of truth. Both cannot be together, nor perceived in the same place. To, get it, to dedicate yourself to both it is, is to set up a goal forever impossible to attain, for part of it is sought through the body, though as a means for seeking out reality through attack. The other part would heal, and therefore calls upon the mind, not the body. The inevitable compromise is the belief that the body must be healed, and not the mind. For this divided goal has given both an equal reality, which could be possible only if the mind is limited to the body and divided into little parts of seeming wholeness, but without connection. This will not harm the body, but it will keep the delusional thought system in the mind. Here, then, is healing needed. And it is here that healing is. For God gave healing not apart from sickness, nor established remedy where sickness cannot be. They are together, and when they are seen together, all attempts to keep both truth and illusion in the mind, where both must be, are recognized as dedication to illusion, and given up when brought to truth and seen as totally unrecognizable, unreconcilable unrecon with truth in any aspect or in any way. Truth and illusion have no connection. This will remain forever true, however much you seek to connect them. But illusions are always connected, as in truth. Each is united, a complete thought system, but totally disconnected to each other. And to perceive this is to recognize where separation is and where it must be healed. The result of an idea is never separate from its source. The idea of separation produced the body and remains connected to it, making it sick because of the mind's identification with it. You think you are protecting the body by hiding its connection, for this concealment seems to keep your identification safe from the attack of truth. If you but understand how much this strange concealment has hurt your mind and how confused your own identification has become because of it, you do not see how great the devastation wrought by your faithlessness, for faithlessness is an attack that seems to be justified by its results. For by withholding faith, you see what is unworthy of it and cannot look beyond the barrier to what is joined with you. To have faith is to heal. It is the sign that you have accepted the atonement for yourself and would therefore share it. By faith, you offer the gift of freedom from the past, which you received. You do not use anything your brother has done before to, to condemn him now. You freely choose to overlook his errors, looking past all barriers between yourself and him, and seeing him them as one. And in that one, you see your faith is fully justified. There is no justification for faithlessness, but faith is always justified. Faith is the opposite of fear, as much a part of love as fear is of attack. 
Faith is the acknowledgement of union. union. It is the gracious acknowledgement of everyone as a son of your most beloved father, loved by him like you, and therefore loved by you as yourself. It is his love that joins you, and for his love you would keep no one separate from yours. Each one appears just as he is perceived in the holy instant, united in your purpose to be released from guilt. You see the Christ in him, and he is healed because you look upon that you, you look upon what makes faith forever justified in everyone. Faith is the gift of God through whom God has given you. Faithlessness looks upon the Son of God and judges him unworthy of forgiveness. But through the eyes of faith, the Son of God is seen already forgiven, free of all the guilt he has laid upon himself. Faith sees him only now because it looks not to the past to judge him, but would see him in only what it would see in you. It sees not through the body's eyes, nor looks to the bodies for its justification. It is the messenger of the new perception, sent forth to gather witnesses unto its coming and to return their messages to you. Faith is easily exchanged for knowledge, as is the real world. For faith arises from the Holy Spirit's perception, and it is the sign you share it, share it with him. Faith is the gift you offer the Son of God through him, and wholly acceptable to his Father as him, and therefore offered you. Your holy relationship with its new purpose offers you faith to give your brother. Your faithlessness has driven you apart, and so you do not recognize salvation in each other. Yet faith unites you in the holiness you see, not through the body's eyes, but in the sight of whom you joined, uh, but in the sight of him who joined you and in whom you are united. Grace is not given a body but to a mind. No, grace is not given to a body, but to a mind. And the mind that receives it looks instantly beyond the body and sees the holy place where it was healed. There is the altar where the grace was given and which it stands. Do you then offer grace and blessing to your brother? For you stand at the same altar where grace was laid for both of you. And be you healed by grace together that you may heal through faith. In the holy instant you stand before the altar God has raised unto himself and both of you. Lay faithlessness aside and come to it together. There you will see the miracle of your relationship as it was made through the faith, through faith. And there it is that you will realize that there is nothing faith cannot give. No error interferes with its calm sight, which brings the mirror with equal ease to all of them. And for what the messengers of love are set to do, they do returning the glad tidings that is that it was done to you who stand together before the altar from which they were sent forth. And faithlessness will keep your little kingdoms barren and separate. So will faith help the Holy Spirit prepare the ground for the most holy garden that he would make of it. For faith brings peace. And, it's, and so it calls on truth to enter and make lovely what has already been prepared for loveliness. Truth follows faith and peace, completing the process of making lovely what they begin, that they, be, 
making lovely that they begin. For faith is still a learning goal, no longer needed when the lesson has been learned. Yet truth will stay forever. Let then your dedication be to the external, no, sorry, to the eternal. Let then your dedication be to the eternal and learn how not to interfere with it and make it salve slave to time. For what you think you do to the eternal, you do to you. Whom God created as his son is slave to nothing, being Lord of all, along with its creator. You can enslave a body, but an idea is free, incapable of being kept in prison or limited in any way, except by the mind that thought it. For it remains joined to its source, which is its jailer or its liberator, according to which it chooses as its purpose for itself. Now, you know, I think I'm going to just stop at this uh, reading. This is very intense stuff, and I think it will um, take several uh, listenings or readings to absorb it. And so rather than uh, moving on, I'm going to say that this is the reading for this uh, Sunday. And to review, it's chapter 19, The Attainment of Peace, and this was section one, Healing and Faith. And we'll pick up with section two and, and maybe read more than that uh, next Sunday, but this uh, is a good reading for today's uh, Sunday reading. So if you uh, would like additional support, uh, you can message me at 907-351-3003. You can message me through Facebook or SoundCloud or YouTube. And uh, you can text me at 907-351. Oh, I said that, didn't I? 351-3003. <laughs> Till next Sunday, namaste and much love.